The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got a mixed market to kick things off this morning. Economic data this week, we get CPI data on Thursday. That'll be a big one. We get PPI data on Friday, following up the main event CPI on Thursday. We get bank earnings on Friday, kicking the season off. That'll be an interesting one as well. Look at the volatility we had pre-market coming into the opening bell. I should say, overnight session, 4.30 in the morning. We're down at 47.16. You drive higher to almost 47.40. We're basically flat in the S&Ps right now. You're trading at 47.33. NASDAQ 100, we're slightly in the positive, up by 17 points, trading at 16,477. The Dow, the Dow. The Dow's going to have some problems today, folks. Why? Because Boeing's having some problems today. you got to recall quite the uh, episode, we'll call it. Um as you have a missing door that detaches from an Alaska Airlines plane. Maybe you've seen the videos over the weekend. Pretty remarkable. Nonetheless, they're able to land that plane safely. Uh, 737 MAX 9s, the FAA has grounded dozens of those planes um, for urgent safety inspections. Yeah, anytime you have a plane disintegrating in the middle of the air, you're going to have some problems, and Boeing stock having some problems this morning. You're down from 250 to 229. Just doesn't stop with this equity sometimes, right? Just constant pressure, man. You pull up the three-year weekly. It's been quite a run up to the high of 265. There's 249. But guess what? You wake up this morning, and you're trading at 230, and it seems like 220 might be the stop for Boeing. That's where you had a lot of support at the beginning of this year. This is a yearly chart. You check out the year, right? Chopped around between 200 and 220. Important to look at a stock like Boeing on a day like today, folks, okay? If you're trading the Dow especially, um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one with Boeing shares. But where does Boeing have some support? Where does it have support, man? It has support at 220, okay? And that's probably where you're heading to. You just traded from 180 up to a high of 267, on that acceleration towards the end of the year but check it out right just like that boeing is now going to trade from the high at 267 at the end of december and you're going to open at 229 you traded as low as about what 225 224.50 for boeing shares so that putting a hurting on the dow this morning the russell negative by one this morning you jump over to bitcoin up another thousand dollars forty five thousand three sixty five crude trades lower how about that one right from 74 bucks to 70 98 I had a great call last week from our man Mike from Somerville. Mike, if you're listening, happy Monday out there, brother. He was talking about crude. It comes back to my mind, though. And I thought about this last Monday. Okay, last Monday the news comes out, or Tuesday, excuse me. Uh, we were off Monday for New Year's. Tuesday, though, that uh, Iran sending a tanker to the Red Sea right now. I was listening to Bloomberg early this morning, and they're talking about, you know, the impact that this Red Sea goods could have on prices in the U.S. You're talking about maybe one-tenth of 1% because the impact in terms of how that impacts the goods we have in Europe, other countries, a bigger number for sure. But it does have to be tough when you see those types of stories, right? Geopolitical risks, whether it's Russia, whether it's the Middle East, whether it's Israel, whether it's the Red Sea going on right now, and crude cannot find a bid, folks. You hear these stories come out and it continues to trade lower with everything going on. We got crude down another $3. We're trading at 70 85 as we got cheap gas coming at you, man. Uh, gotta love it. Seeing seeing two handles on the price of gas, and it's 2024. Pretty remarkable, to say the least. All right, we continue jumping around to commodities. We got some action, man. Gold down $22. Whew, below Friday's low, you got to jump over to the dollar index, right? Not exactly a big move you might expect when you see that type of action in gold. But you got crude pulling back to start the day. You have gold pulling back to start the day. You jump over to yields. Quite the move on Friday. We're right back to where we were before that economic news. You spike to 111.06 on Friday. You drive a point higher, and we're right back to where we started. You're talking about a 10-year yield right now of about 4.04%. 4 
right in the middle of 4.04, 4.05, just above 4%, the yield on that four-year. All right, where do we kick things off? Yeah, we got to kick it off with a little bit of Boeing, right? Um, Boeing CEO's comeback plan for 2024 takes a hit five days in, I would say so. Um, the manufacturing process for the 737 MAX 9 jets comes under scrutiny. Yeah, I would say so. Scraps a leadership summit, calls an all-hands meeting. And uh, I'll try and pull up some of these visuals. If you didn't see them over the weekend, maybe they got them in here. United is the biggest operator of the MAX 9. They get 79 planes. Alaska's at 65. Copa, 29. Others are at 26. Aero Mexico at 19. Yeah. Pretty remarkable. Investors will look into how the doors are plugged and even question why they exist if they can come open. They got four bolts in there. The hinge section is secured by four bolts and opens outward from the top. Something must have been amiss with at least one of those bolts. Not exactly encouraging, right? Uh, you know what is encouraging? The iPhone. So there were two phones that were ripped out of the door. Just tantalizing stuff, right? Uh, anecdotal, not really important in terms of Apple. Not important. I mean, thank goodness everyone was all right, man, on that flight. Pretty remarkable. Some of the video videos have surfaced. Um, but yeah, you got to love this on the iPhone marketing team. If you're a marketing exec at Apple today, right? You see this headline on the top of Bloomberg. iPhone survives 16,000 foot fall from Alaska Air. Apple's having some issues, as we know, to kick off their year as well, though. Stay tuned, folks. Lots to talk about to kick off the week. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, jumping over to an NPR article here. Interesting. Before the door plug flew off that blowing plane, an advisory light came on three times. I mean, this is just like, where's the FAA in some of this stuff? You keep saying it, right? It happened the first time. But, I mean, check it out. This is how it works in airplanes. Remarkable that they are so safe. And then you see some of the stuff that goes on, some of the close calls and some of the red flags that were displayed accordingly ahead of time. Always keep your seatbelt on when you're on a plane, folks. This should be your lesson, right? You're sitting in the, the, the plane. You might think everything's okay. Always keep your seatbelt on in a plane just like in a car. An advisory light on the Alaska Airlines plane that lost a piece of its fuselage last week had come on during previous flights, preventing the aircraft from being used on long flights over water. How would you feel if you're getting on the plane and they told you that the plane you're on isn't even allowed to fly long routes over water because it's got some type of emergency advisory light coming on that they haven't looked into yet. Right? What is going on? Um, now, you have that one. But what's also interesting is when you look at how this unfolded, okay? So this is another article from Bloomberg. This one just talks about, first one I was talking about here, was the Boeing story, right, where that comes. This one just talking about the grounding and how it kind of escalated. It should be the FAA first if you think about it, right? They're supposed to be the ones policing the companies because companies, when policing themselves, have an obvious bias, right? Boeing Max grounding goes global uh, as carriers follow FAA order. Now, the carriers followed the order. You got 171 jets, but look how it unfolded. So the grounding quickly gathered pace, which carriers from the U.S. to Panama to Turkey pulling the model from service for inspections after a fuselage section on a brand new Alaska Airlines jet blew out. It's brand new, folks, okay? Remember that, right? It matters. So after, after Alaska kept their fleet of 65 737 MAX on the ground, okay, you had United the model's top operator following suit with some jets. Then the FAA ordered a temporary grounding of the 171 planes. Now, the only U.S. airlines are United and Alaska, okay? Air Mexico took all of its 9 Max out of service. Panica, Panama's Copa Airlines did the same with most of the jets. But you can see how it was actually Alaska first, then it was United, then it was the FAA. You know, how far along those were worth looking into, as in, was there a five-minute delay? Was there an hour-long delay? Was there a couple days delay? Uh, pretty remarkable, nonetheless, in terms of how that goes through. There's the door plug, so not even a door, right? Just a plug, basically, to put in there. And yeah, pretty remarkable, to say the least, man. And there it is, with United at 79. We talked about Alaska at 65. Yeah, keep those seatbelts on, man. Whoops, you jump over to United shares. A slight hit for them. I mean, they got, what, 65 planes are out of the air this morning, 41.65 down to 41.18. They're getting back some of that move. But Boeing, yeah, that's a tough one, man. 228.70, it's going to be a tough day for Boeing because everybody rightfully, show, rightfully so should be a little bit worried about Boeing and their history. And they got a new plane that's just popping out pieces. And how about the light going off three times and that plane not able to travel long distances over water before that um, jumps around, <laughs> right? Pretty remarkable to be on that plane and find out that it had air lights going on. You couldn't go over water. All right, let's get back to the market. Here we go. Where are we going in the market? Ah, uh, What are we going to jump to next? Yeah, we talk about super cycles. We talk about Boeing. How about the Fed? The Fed pivot going to dominate the year of rate cuts. Quarterly outlook on what to expect from monetary policy about to turn, um, about turn, excuse me, follows most aggressive tightening in decades. And I would say so, folks. When's it going to line up, right? The Federal Reserve will lead the pivot for the richer countries after its policymakers signaled 75 basis points of cuts for the year. It's January. They've signaled three cuts. The market's ahead of them somewhere at five, six, seven cuts, Okay. And before you know it, we're going to get into we got a meeting at the end of this month. We have the meeting in March on March 20th. That's the one that potentially could be the first cut, depending on how things shake out. Uh, but it better lead what's going on. And I think you're already seeing it happen no matter what. I mean, don't get caught up in some of these moves 
whether it's a reverberation in the 10-year, whether it's a re slight reverberation in the dollar, on a longer-term basis, okay, look where we've been, look at the lows, we're sitting at 111.23, okay, and remember that we are at basically a 4% 10-year right now, and the Fed has not even begun to cut yet. And meanwhile, the 10-year just rose six full points and then some from the lows that we were at back in October. So we are now trading at a price point we were at in September of 2022, which is pretty remarkable when you think about how far we've come since then, where we've gone, et cetera. Um, so it's going to be a little bit choppy at times, but very difficult to imagine unless we get some real surprises on the inflation spectrum. Thursday is going to be an important one with the CPI. Friday follows that up with PPI. But yeah, it's going to be very difficult to imagine that inflation really gets in the way of the Fed unless you get some real surprises. When the Fed says that, of course, the door is still open to hikes, the door is always open to hikes if the data somehow surprises you. But that's not the case, and that's what they should say. Uh, and we get Thursday CPI. Now, what is going to happen is, so we're getting CPI for December, okay? And some of the comps on a yearly basis, last December, you actually had declines on CPI. So that was a low number on a monthly basis last year that you're going to have a year-over-year -year comp against. So be aware of that. When we might get a little bit of a hot number Thursday, it's going to be priced in for the expectations. But realize that we're comping out against some numbers last year that were actually declining in December before we um, saw some rises yet again. All right, what else we got pulled up? How about Apple? Now, this story just coming out as I came on the air. February 2nd, they're, uh, they're launching the Apple Vision Pro headset. Launches in the U.S. on February 2nd. Pre-orders to begin on January 19th. And there is uh, what they released when they were at their worldwide, so let's see, launched its Vision Pro headset worldwide developer constant event on Monday, ending month of, months of speculation, February 2nd. $3,500. My advice would be to wait for uh, one or two iterations of this before purchasing it, unless you're a real fanboy. It's pretty remarkable, though, that they're going to put out this thing, and they do not expect the headset to drive significant revenue. For example, UBS is looking at only around $1.4 billion, a relatively immaterial amount of money. Pretty remarkable when a billion dollars is an immaterial amount of money, but it would make sense. To that company, it is an immaterial amount of money. When you think that they have 16 billion shares outstanding, you jump over to Apple shares this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. We got four minutes to go until the opening bell. You get Apple catching a little bit of a bid. You get the NASDAQ 100, slightly in positive territory. Let's jump around to some of the other magnificent stocks that have kicked off the year um, in a relatively non-magnificent fashion. But you got Amazon. They're going to open about 50 cents higher at 146 this morning. We talked about Apple barely in the green. Microsoft catches a bid by almost $2 to $369.45. Tesla shares are almost flat, slightly in the red at $236.77. Meta shares catching a bid as well, $353. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got Boeing opening down $20. We're going to be back for the opening bell. It's Monday. Lots to talk about still. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. 
Teddy Kegstaff breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter Market Insights firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We'll get the SP, s and excuse me, up by four points, five points, make it NASDAQ 100. You're up by 50 points. The Dow off by 130 points. Jump over to Boeing. They're going to be potentially the story of the day. Off by 8.35%. You jump over to Apple shares. They're positive by four tenths percent. And it is pretty remarkable that we live in a time where you can drop a phone like that from 16,000 feet. Maybe it lands in some bushes. I wouldn't be surprised, man. I drop my phone on hardcore cement more often than I like to admit and I'm always amazed when if it drops face down I say to myself this is going to be the time that I definitely just shattered my phone because my goodness what am I doing dropping this thing on cement like that uh, and I pick it up and it's fine so let alone if you actually hit some grass from 16,000 feet uh, the story out there before we jump back to the CPI because I got some good data on the CPI as well but let me get the let me get, where is it? Come on, there it is. The iPhone. I mean, it's even better than you can write in terms of <clears throat> this thing lands, okay? Somebody finds it. They're looking at emails from the Alaska Airlines baggage receipt that cost them $70, and the phone's not even locked. It's fine. It was in airplane mode. Kudos to that passenger for using airplane mode, as you're supposed to. Uh, pretty clean, no scratches on it, sitting under a bush, and it didn't have a screen lock on it. I, I, the, the marketing writes itself. Pretty remarkable, but that's become the course. And I, I do, you do have to realize that that technology, sometimes it just passes us by because we're so used to it. But it is remarkable where they've got to in terms of being able to, to protect products that fall like that. And they do Steve Rhodes, oh, Steve Rhodes, Steve Rhodes, Steve Jobs, Steve Rhodes, our man, uh, coming up at 11 o'clock. Uh, Steve Jobs, he made sure they could drop it from your hip. You had to be able to drop it from your hip and not shatter because guess what? He's no fool, man. He knew you're going to drop it right from where you're carrying it all the time. You couldn't have a computer like that in your hand. It would have been a problem, to put it lightly. Look at this market, man. We got the S&P up by 10, NASDAQ 100 now up by 80. Meta shares up by a percent. Amazon catches a bit up by one and a quarter percent. You jump over Microsoft up half a percent. Tesla flat this morning. You jump over to NVIDIA. There's a bid for you up by 1.4 percent. Let's jump over to the banks as we got bank earnings on Friday. JP Morgan. So let's see what the yields are doing real quick before we go. So you got yields sitting right at about 4.05 percent in the 10-year. You jump over to the banks. 
And we're talking CPI in one second, folks. Don't go away. It's coming. Because we do have some interesting comps when you look at where we were last December and then the numbers that followed. This one going to be the toughest number in terms of potentially a high CPI. So if you're looking for a high CPI, all right, we're teasing it. Um, but we're going to go back to the banks. We jump over to the Analyze tab because we get their earnings coming up, okay? I wonder it's not picking up the correlation. What am I doing? Analyze. Uh, I have to set my... All right, I'm going to pull this up in the next break and get the earnings dates for these because I believe they are on Friday, but I'll pull them up. For some reason, my screen not showing, and I think I have a setting a little bit different than I'm used to as I was recalibrating my office a little bit over the weekend. Okay, I did talk about the December numbers that we were dealing with in 2022 that we will be comping against when we get the number in 2023. To show you what that looks like, okay, here was the December 2022. This is from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, bls.website.gov, bls.gov, okay? I'm going to post this link into the den. I just found it by Googling it, folks. The BLS has a lot of their great stuff just right out there. You can find it by Googling it. This is what was released January 12th last year, okay? Point being, December was a negative number. Remember that as you go into things. Okay, now, when you look at those numbers going across the board, okay, we saw increases from there, January, February, March, you know, the numbers go up, you see where they are prior to that as things were really heating up. Okay, that's a one month percentage change. Remember where we were, I mean, just bonkers to think about, right? CPI going up 1.2% in 30 days, 1%, 1.3, again, this is 2022. But keep your eye on that number, okay, because that's what we're comping against. So you're going to probably see a hot CPI number. Don't be surprised if the market doesn't freak out about it, okay? It's important to note. Yeah, I got a couple other charts up here, but that was basically the most important one. Uh, this one, just cherry-picking. Going to the last CPI print we got for November of 2023, you look at the numbers that we're at here, one month percentage change in CPI for all urban, urban consumers, seasonally adjusted, November to November. You see the December there when you're looking at urban consumers, a slight increase, but you see the other numbers we had, okay? So January, February, they're gonna be tough yearly comps. When the beginning of 2023, you were going up half a percentage point on a 30 month. That was a one month change. We're trying to get CPI back to 2% over a year. January and February of last year, the prices went up a full percentage point if you almost combine them. So remember that when, what do we have to do? Well, when it comes time to get the January and February numbers, you're gonna have a much friendlier comp than what you're gonna have on December. A much friendlier comp than what you're gonna have on December. December okay yeah that's a that's an important chart not a lot of people know that chart and I and you know the Fed knows it okay and you know that the big market players know it so again don't be surprised don't be wagering on a hot CPI number for the a yearly comp December to December when that's probably going to be the case because you're facing some comps that are that are you know, a decline versus a barely an increase. All right, what else we got pulled up? I want to talk a little insurance. Where's the insurance article? Come on. There it is. Buying home and auto insurance is becoming impossible, folks. I got to tell you, living in Florida, man, we got a lot of things great in Florida, which is why I live here, okay? But boy, we have an insurance problem. I think a lot of people are aware of the home insurance problem that we have. I've talked about it on the air here. My home insurance last year, folks, when it came back up for renewal, if you haven't heard me talk about this before, something like $7,200 for home insurance, okay? It was up like 100%, and it was up like 100% over the you know two or three years. That $7,200 for basically a four-bedroom, two-bath home in South Tampa, okay? $7,200. And you're only talking about a home... About small, four, four, two, but on the smaller side, South Tampa, um, good old South Tampa, love it. Um, 
under 2,000 square feet, okay, $7,200 up for renewal. And that's just fortunate enough to even have a private company that was going to offer me insurance, okay? I went with Citizens, 1200 bucks, something like that, from 7200 to 1200 Now, there's differences in those policies. Look into it for yourself to make sure that some of those exceptions uh, are worthwhile, but it usually is, folks. If you're paying for private insurance in the state of Florida, look into Citizens. Now, the other side of that is auto insurance. I just had my auto insurance go up, okay? My auto insurance just went from 1200 bucks for six months to almost 2000 for no reason. 1200 bucks for six months, the prepay rate for six months, up to 2000 for no reason. And that's for like a five-year-old BMW, which is nothing crazy. We'll finish this up. Stay tuned. We'll come TFNN right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got a little bit of positive market action to start the week off. We got the S&Ps right now up by 10 points, trading at 47.44. NASDAQ 100, you're up over 100 points, up 106, 16,566. The Dow, not so much. Dow off 177. Boeing putting a hurting on the Dow, and it's not going to stop anytime soon, folks. 220 is where Boeing's going to be heading to. You're trading at 227 right now. For some context, talking about it at the beginning of the program here. I mean, you can see the volume that we had. Okay, my dad talks volume. If you don't follow volume, 
I don't know how you do it, man. Uh, that move, maybe you're coming back down to the low. 210 is where that move traded from. That's two earnings ago in July of 2024. And yeah, you drive higher from that price point. That's the last time you had some big volume. Yeah, you had some volume up there. But look at that volume stick out where you traded from 210 all the way up to 240. And we just broke right through that area. And you do see that we've had a couple runs, whether it was the week of June 5th, right? Getting up there on 37 million shares. You got up to that high of 32 million shares on their big earnings. In July, you had 55 million shares. But we built a base there. 220 is going to be the first area. And maybe you come back down to that 210 area right in the middle of this, <clears throat> excuse me, this consolidation you had in the beginning of 2023. All right, jumping back to the insurance deal. So the losses are real, okay, uh, and the prices are real. I mean, this is going on across the board, man. We're seeing it in Florida. They're talking about California big time in this article as well. Okay, I'm going to post this in the uh, Tiger's Den right now as we speak, just so I don't forget. I'll post that CPI report later as well. State Farm racked up $13 billion in property casualty un underwriting losses in 2022, its worst ever. Last year, it stopped writing new home insurance policies in California. The state's regulators last month approved a 20% home insurance rate increase. Now, that's not the numbers that I had in Florida, folks, okay? It's not. Because uh, things can creep, right? And they have been creeping for a long time. And, you know, it goes from 1500 bucks to 18 to 24 to 28 to 36 to 38 to 72, something like that. And finally, the 38 to 72 year over year got me. Go to Citizens, 12 or 1300 bucks. But that may come to bite the voters of Florida, citizens of Florida, I should say, um, because they're basically being insured by the state. And, you know, Florida really gets hammered, man. It's going to be the taxpayers that are paying for that insurance policy. It's not going to be the insurance companies. And part of the reason why is because they don't want to see charts like this anymore. I mean, check it out. Annual profit or loss on property casually underwriting, underwriting for U.S. insurers, okay? U.S. property casual, casualty insurers who insure home and auto policies, racked up $32.2 billion in net underwriting losses in the first nine months of last year. Did you get that one? They lost $25.7 billion in 2022. They lost $32 billion in the first nine months of 2023, you add those up, you're talking about almost $60 billion over two years in losses. Uh, and, you know, the article states here, it's a journal article. I'm, uh, I don't know who's writing it. Let's see who the author is of this. Gene Inglesham, Inglesham, probably no fool, Gene. This is what insurance companies do. I remember my dad talking about it forever. Listen, Buffett makes his money in insurance. He's one of the richest guys in the world. Insurance companies are going to be okay in the long run because they're playing the long game. They're going to be wrong some years. But guess what happens when they're wrong? When they're wrong, when they're on the wrong side of variance, and there is so much variance in weather-related losses, folks, okay? Look at Florida last year. We barely had one storm that almost hit us, miss where we were, in a year that, that the weather, what was the Gulf? Seven degrees hotter than it normally is? Florida, we didn't catch a storm in this area. Florida, pretty much okay. The Panhandle, pretty much okay as far as years go, right? But still, some of these storms, you get the fires out in California, which is a big reason what's going on. You got the storms going on in the, in the Florida area, I'm sure. But what do they do, Okay. When disasters hit, they tally the losses, they raise their prices or they cut the offerings, okay? Big profits often follow, leading to complaints from consumers and regulators. Uh, shares of insur insurers, including all states, have already rebounded in anticipation of higher profits. Nevertheless, the industry's traditional business model is under pressure and some think broken. Um, yeah. Yeah, they go over, right? The monthly premium on a 2012 Mazda 5 is $223 a month. That used to be your payment, man. I have these conversations, right? So I have a five-year-old BMW, and 
you run the numbers in terms of what the car is worth, what I'm paying to insure it. If I'm paying $2,000 to insure that car, okay, now this is different because you're paying for liability insurance, right? You're paying for more in an automobile that you can hurt somebody else, they can hurt you. I have uninsured coverage as well, underinsured coverage as well because in Florida, unfortunately, a lot of people are vastly underinsured. All of that adds up. On a house, you're not paying with some of those variables to the certain degree, but when you put it in the context that I am paying $4,000 a year to insure my vehicle, over the course of five years, four or five years, I'm going to pay as much as that vehicle is almost worth. And it's probably going to be exactly what it's worth at the end of the four years. How does that work? That's not going to work. I don't know how that's going to work, man. At some point, where are the self-driving Teslas? And I say that half seriously because a lot of people are going to start having the conversation, especially on the auto front, okay? Okay. If you have, what's the average price for a vehicle right now? Something bonkers, right? 48,000, 50,000, somebody help me out. The average price for a new vehicle in the US, astronomical numbers, the average payment, probably an astronomical number. I don't know the exacts offhand, but they're always surprising numbers, how high that number has crept up. Then you add gas, which is affordable right now, but you're still talking about $50 a week, whatever it is then you add insurance, then you add service, then you add the occasionally time that you get into an accident, you know, and you got to pay the extra insurance. You got to pay, unfortunately, um, everything that comes with that, right? Your deductible, et cetera. I mean, these rates, folks, pay attention to them because it matters. I don't know what's going to happen with the Florida home insurance market. And that market has a bunch of problems in it as well. I wish DeSantis would spend more time on that market. That shouldn't be a politicized statement. I think a lot of people on both sides of the aisle would feel that way. I wish Florida politicians would spend some time really making substantive, substantial changes to help Florida homeowners because, yes, we have a problem with losses, okay, but we also have a massive problem with fraud having to do with roofers in particular in the state that has caused uh, – some huge problems within that industry that's already under a lot of pressure. But pay attention to this one. Pay, pay attention to those insurers um, because, yeah, you're talking about – they talk about in here, folks, how about a 40 percent increase in California is what they're looking at. Let me get that number. Yeah, I'll pull this one up after the break because the insurance companies basically were going to jump out of the states. The states blinked. And yeah, now you're getting the rises that come with it. We'll talk about some of those rises as well. We'll take a look at some of the other equities. Yeah, losses due to weather coming at you. Climate change, folks. S&P is up by 13. We got higher prices to start the week. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps holding on to those gains. We're up by eight points right now. You were just as high as that 4747 area. We've backed off a bit. NASDAQ 100 surges higher. We're up above where you were on Friday, actually, and then NASDAQ 100. We're solid 200 points above where you were at about 5 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Dow trading lower, off by six tenths percent. We check in on Boeing shares pretty much right near the lows. And uh, as I said it, folks, 220. 210 might be the area. 220 is probably the area that it's heading to, and it might do it today. You're only $6 away, you're down by 9%. Does not look good for Boeing, as we talked about at the beginning of the program. If you didn't check it out, folks, you can always check out the archives. Head on over to our YouTube page, subscribe, like our page, subscribe to the notifications anytime we go live. And uh, of course, all of our videos, all of our programs are there, you can watch the archive. But yeah, they had lights going off, they couldn't travel long distances over water, and it's a brand new plane, and, and pieces just popping out midair. Be careful. For sure. Uh, you jump back to that car insurance article. Pay attention to these insurers. I'm going to take a deep dive in them one way or the other because it seems like they're going to get rates high enough. Eventually, they're going to make money. They'll have those couple years that things subside. They'll reap the profits. Rates will stay there, and then they'll just keep going up if they need more money. Auto rates. In December, New Jersey approved an auto rate increase for all state, 17%. New York, 15%. California, our is going to allow Allstate to boost auto rates by 30%. They're still deciding a 40% increase in home insurance rates, right? Yeah, and I'm seeing bigger numbers than that in Florida, man, across the board. Pretty remarkable. All right, we check in on yields as we jump around. You get the 10-year right now. Yeah, a little bit of higher price, lower yield. We're right near about 4% right now. You jump over to that gold contract, pulling back gold up, excuse me, down about $20 right now. Trading at 2029 Folks, if you haven't checked out my dad's gold report, great time to do it on Monday. He's got new issues out on Monday that come out. You got updates throughout the week when warranted. Uh, Monday's a great time to try out any of the newsletters at TFNN. Remember, folks, all the newsletters we do come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you pay for that product. You've got 30 days to try it out. You don't like it. You cancel. You get your money back nothing to risk when you can get your money back within that 30 days folks thanks so much for kicking the trading day off i see our man basil chapman he's in there getting ready he's coming up next with the tiger technicians hour we'll see you tomorrow folks have a great monday